Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. We are now joined uh, via Zoom. We're checking in with Lieutenant Edward Hartwick, and he is going to be helping us today talk a little bit about uh, a recent incident uh, that took place last night uh, here in the city of Fitchburg in Chalet Gardens uh, Road area. Uh, Edward, thanks for uh, taking the time. Uh, I know you're busy and tired from last night, but I appreciate your uh, time. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeremy. Uh, first and foremost, if you could kind of set up here, it came uh, in uh, as what you guys press released it as potential uh, hazardous material. Uh, kind of talk about uh, what transpired uh, starting last night. Sure. So uh, around 5 uh, p.m. yesterday, uh, we were called to uh, an apartment uh, in the 2300 block of Chalet Gardens. Uh, a family member was calling concerned about a family member that reside, uh, resides at that apartment there. And uh, we went to, uh, at the request of that family member to go and check actually on another family member who had gone to check on the resident of that apartment and uh, encountered the resident. Uh, during the course of our contact um, with the resident and their family member, uh, the uh, resident who was the only occupant of that apartment was taken into protective custody. And while we were inside the apartment, officers noticed some concerning uh, items uh, that were deemed to be potentially hazardous materials. Uh, and so as a result of that, out of an abundance of caution, there was no immediate, um, immediately recognizable risk at that point, but out of an abundance of caution to continue the investigation and make sure everything was safe. We worked uh, with the fire department and the Red Cross to evacuate the other three apartments in the uh, building uh, to make sure that everyone would be safe while we uh, carried on our our investigation. Uh, from there, uh, we worked with the Dane County um, Hazardous Device Unit, uh, formerly or I guess more informally known as the Bomb Squad. Uh, and they did a preliminary investigation of the materials inside. And then uh, as a result of their work, uh, the uh, 54th Civilian Service Team, uh, which is a component of the National Guard, um, came in uh, with their expertise and skill set to assess the materials that were inside the apartment and uh, determined that uh, after examining a lot of the materials at the apartment and the building was safe. Uh, from there, we had some follow-up investigation uh, to, to conduct uh, this morning. Uh, Net, uh, Edward, sorry, I nicknamed there, Net, uh, Edward, uh, talk about uh, the scene safety. This is something that you guys practice, uh, certainly, about going into any scene and scene safety, but uh, seeing something like this, uh, how are the officers prepped to uh, handle this type of situation? Kind of unfolded, uh, you know, quickly uh, in nature. Yeah, that's the challenge that we're in. Uh, we go into a number of environments uh, that have a number of risks associated. Currently, we're obviously dealing with the pandemic, uh, which presents a risk to everyone. Uh, and then we never know what type of environment, whether it's someone's car or someone's apartment, someone's residence, we never know what might be going on in there. Uh, and uh, so officers have to really make some quick judgments based on observations, training, uh, past experience, uh, things um, just don't look or feel right. And uh, the officers on scene did a good job of identifying some suspicious materials and uh, getting the uh, experts involved to make some more determinations as to what the most prudent course of action would be to make sure that the community is safe. Yeah, and then what happens, uh... And again, we can't, I obviously know we're not going to get any details here. This is an ongoing investigation. Uh, so understanding that, uh, but uh, how do you, uh, how does the team work then to move, preserve the evidence first off for data, you know, you're collecting evidence here on the scene, but then to move that and, and then deem that it is all safe uh, uh, for our community. Sure, it's it's uh, really teamwork. Uh, we really focus on the evidence and any potential uh, criminal investigation and criminal aspect of it. Uh, and we defer to the experts who uh, literally are able to bring scientists on scene as part of this uh, civilian service team uh, to come in and assess these things from a distance uh, with limited personnel inside the apartment uh, to make sure that things are safe. And uh, it's obviously the priority is number one, always everybody's safety. 
um, over the, the ability to collect evidence. And when things in this instance, when nothing was destroyed or damaged, we were able to assess everything uh, from an evidentiary standpoint and uh, really accomplish both tasks in this case. Um, but uh, fortunately, they were able to make a quick assessment of what was going on there uh, and, and determine that there really wasn't any ongoing threat or potential for, for a negative outcome. Uh, it says here on the recent release uh, that you put out there, again, no uh, charges wise, you've handed this off uh, to the district attorney. Is this pretty uh, standard in, in this type of case? Again, we're not too sure what the case is. Uh, uh, you know, we know enough on the surface here, and I realize you can't go into it, but uh, is this some uh, normal practice uh, based on, on what you're seeing here? Uh, so, in this instance, uh, it's not a, a routine investigation fortunately that we handle uh, so we have to uh, really evaluate all the information that's available from the uh, partners that worked with us in this incident to assess what evidence and information is out there uh, a big component in referring criminal charges is often intent and what the individual intended on potentially doing with these um, materials and so we have to uh, take some time to make sure we have all the accurate information uh, available to us at this time and make an evaluation uh, as to whether or not we will seek uh, a referral for criminal charges. And then ultimately it's up to the district attorney's office as it is in any case as to whether or not they deem uh, criminal charges to be the most appropriate outcome uh, in any instance. Well, yeah, fortunately, this isn't a regular occurrence. Um, and so a lot of times in instances where we are dealing with unique circumstances as far as potential um, criminal charges, uh, we really serve the role of assessing what evidence and information is available to us at the time uh, and putting together a package for uh, assessment by the district attorney's office to see if uh, any charges are um, going to result um, or if there's any criminal any possibility of criminal charges and then they obviously make the determination if they deem those appropriate in this instance uh, so again another part of the teamwork end of things uh, you know we are the initial responders and then are kind of serving as the facilitators and the um, maintaining the scene security and the safety of, of the area while the experts do their work and then we in a sense defer everything that we collect to the district attorney's office uh, to, to make an assessment for what the most appropriate outcome is in this instance. Yeah, and uh, again, I appreciate you. Yeah, I know that you can't go into too many details, so uh, do my best not to just uh, sure. go down that path here. Um, but uh, is there any comparisons with this uh, to something that we've seen in Beaver Dam? We've seen it in Madison where, where things were collected uh, in, a, in a nature of, of circumstance uh, maybe for harm uh, is there any any details there that you can talk about uh or anything to ensure the public sure. here that uh <laughs> you know, this I mean yeah safe yeah so i mean there are obviously similarities in how the scene is processed assessed and processed but the one of the i guess key components that has to be taken into account especially when we're looking at things from a criminal aspect or potential criminal aspect is intent and what uh what what the person who was in possession or was in this apartment what these items uh, may have intended or had additional evidence that they may have been involved in uh and in this instance uh we have not been um able to determine any sort of intent or any evidence of intent to use any of these materials uh, again some of these materials have explosive properties to them um, and the potential could could be there if uh, proper combinations were in place. Um, I'm not a, a chemist by any stretch of the imagination. So the potential, I guess, could be there. And uh, on the surface, some of these things could be labeled as explosives or could be used in explosives. But again, to, uh, to answer your question, and, and, and in comparison to these other incidents, we don't have any information that there is a, a, a plan or an intent in place uh, by the resident of this apartment to, to use these or cause harm or damage to anybody or anything. Uh, this um, sounds like it was a sort of a check welfare of a check welfare um, situation. Uh, pretty common occurrence that taking away the hazardous material piece of this. Uh, would you have any advice for for checking on loved ones? I know we're going through a difficult time with the COVID nineteen pandemic, and uh, mental health is a super big uh, big piece here now. I think we need to focus on uh, from your standpoint checking on loved ones, uh, no matter what the situation is. Uh, any tips there that uh, we could share with our community. Yeah, uh, coincidentally enough, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. 
and uh, bring up a very good point in that uh, people who are already experiencing um, challenges related to their mental health um, may have those issues heightened or furthered uh, as a result of whatever may be going on in their life related to the pandemic. Uh, and so, uh, you know, anecdotally, I think we've seen uh, a number of these incidents where people are concerned about uh, the welfare of a loved one or family member, uh, or people are reaching out to us for assistance. And I think it's important for people to know that we are uh, there as a resource and kind of the initial um, responding agency to to check on someone and we're pretty adept at connecting people uh, to the proper resources and you know just because you call the police because someone may be in need of uh, assistance or you haven't heard from them in some time doesn't mean that they're in any sort of trouble by any stretch of the imagination uh, our intent is to to assess any incident whether it's this uh, incident or just someone calling on a family member that you know something concerning is going on that we have to look at it through the lens of what's going on with that situation. They may be engaging in an acti activity or behavior that could be criminal, but is, is it really criminal at that point or is it more of a mental health issue? So I don't want people to, I don't ever want someone to be dissuaded by contacting us or for contacting us, you know, thinking that the person's going to get in trouble. So, you know, we're available. Any law enforcement agency is pretty, um, experience that dealing with individuals in mental health crisis. We have a number of officers, a rather high percentage of our staff are trained in crisis intervention um, and uh, are skilled, have a skill set that's particularly geared towards dealing with people in mental health crisis. Yeah, you guys uh, do a great job uh, from the stories that we reported on uh, throughout the years of, of the extra training you do go through uh, to deal with uh, mental health and, and other re related issues. Uh, finally, uh, as we wrap up here, um, uh, any threat to the, the, this person going into this, and this would be uh, the, the uh, reporter side in me here, uh, leave any questions on the table. Um, but as far as any charges coming out, uh, uh, any future information, uh, when will we start to uh, see some of that uh, come out? Uh, I don't, at this point, based on the information that we have available, I don't think that there's gonna be much further follow-up uh, as it relates. I don't uh, foresee any additional information being uncovered. Uh, there, from our understanding at this point, there's no uh, ongoing threat to the community or any individuals in the community as a result of this investigation. And uh, I think we're, uh, approaching this um, you know, more so from the perspective of uh, the, the welfare check that originally in, or, origi started this incident, I'm sorry, and, uh, and looking at it from that perspective. Uh, so I, I don't anticipate much uh, additional follow-up to come from this. Uh, I would uh, just put a plug out there uh, that we remain available if uh, residents anywhere they live, no matter what their circumstances are, if they're observing abnormal or suspicious behavior. Um, and again, behavior, actual behavior um, that they can articulate as to that's why it's suspicious or concerning, please give us a call uh, and let us know we'd rather check on it or know of it um, you know, before it becomes a, a major concern. Yeah, see something, say something is something that Chad and I have talked about many times on the show, yeah. and I, I laugh, but it's very, a very a, a true thing, and, and any information you can get, no matter what it is, uh, uh, is very helpful. Edward, thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate uh, you answering the questions today, and uh, we'll look forward to having you back on the show, uh, maybe for other circumstances. we got to get on here and, and yeah. talk, about, uh, talk about other stuff you guys are working on. A lot of great stuff happening there at the Fitchburg Police Department. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, uh, Lieutenant Edward, uh, good friend of the show and appreciate his time. And uh, if there's any other info, certainly you know we'll share it right here on Talking Fitchburg. Take a quick break, more to come. You are watching Talking Fitchburg.